Hey guys, it's Biggs, the Mad Aquarist. I literally just got back from Pennsylvania, said hi to my wife and kids, and I uh, didn't even do anything else, and I had to come downstairs because I came home with one of these. What's gonna be in this? There's not a lot of fish. Considering the whole fish room's been in complete destruction right now, we're getting ready for a complete overhaul of what we're gonna be changing. But uh, I, I, a wonderful, wonderful breeder in, in Allentown, Pennsylvania, by the name of Karen Haas, She's a very good friend. She's an exceptional breeder. Her and her husband, Alan, have gifted me a species that I have never had before. I've never seen it available before. Doesn't mean it hasn't been available, but they're probably one of the most coveted of uh, all the Central American cichlids. Doesn't get roughly big, not super aggressive. Let's unbox it and see what we got. And the, the way Karen packs was impeccable. It's moved around. Gotta imagine this has gone on several planes. I stuffed these extra bags in there. But uh, every single bag was packed. There's a heat vac. We live in, I live in Canada, which is a hell of a lot colder. But uh, every single individual fish, individually bagged, and breather bags. She sent me home with 11 of them. Where are they? Can you see that? One of the most coveted of the Central, I'm sorry, one of the most coveted, one of the Central American cichlids. I've never seen it in the hobby. Personally, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But uh, a few years ago, there was a gentleman by the name of Michael Obello, good friend down in Florida, and he was able to breed them. And he gave some to Alan, and Alan and Karen have now given some to me. So I'm pretty, pretty excited. Got my temp gun. So we'll give a quick read, see what the body, the temperatures of these bags looks like. A little bit cool at about 70 degrees. 70 degrees, we're going to have to... With breather bags, you can't just float the bags. Breather bags all clot off any sort of uh, oxygen transpiration or CO2 transpiration. So you actually have to take them out of the bags into some water and then drip water into them. So let's do that and uh, get it set up and then we'll come back. Here we've unpacked the box. Every single individual fish individually bagged in a breather bag. Uh, because you're using breather bags, the breather bags, the plastic one, you can't float the bags, but you also can't put the bags touching each other. They'll smother them. There'll be no place for the, the CO2 gas to escape. So what she does is she packs them up individually and then wraps them in those blue or, or white paper towels or something like that. That'll absorb any sort of moisture that may come from the bags or leaks it whatsoever. Now here's the heat pack. And, uh, now we're going to cut these all open and put them in a, in a tub and get them ready to drip and acclimate to my water. So there's 10 in, 10 in total. Here's eight of them in the bucket right now being dripped. You can see the, the slow, slow drip going here. You can control the drip as much as you want anyway just by tying it a little knot. Here's my airline going all the way up. Comes down. Goes and they'll be dripping into the bucket. And we'll let that drip for half hour to an hour and so and see where it goes. But she also had sent me two substantially larger ones. So these ones here, I don't know, you know, in, in the confines of her, her aquarium, the fry were going up together, but I don't think I'm gonna trust putting these two much substantially larger ones in with the smaller ones. So we're gonna go and land them in a different tank over here that's just kind of a, a nursery tank that's just sitting in the back room. We'll float them too. Well, everybody's all landed in their tanks now. Uh, the, the fry were pretty small, so they kind of disappeared in amongst the plants and the driftwood in the tank. So there's not really going to be any video available of them for a little bit until they grow up a bit. And the two single uh, ones that are a little bit larger, they looked really, really nice, but they disappeared amongst all the, all, the, all the plants and stuff in the other tank as well in the nursery. So well, I've posted a picture here so you can get an idea of what they're going to look like. This picture was taken by a good friend from Ohio, home of the OCA extravaganza, uh, Mr. Don Danko, the club president. And uh, the beautiful, beautiful species, it's, it's uh, similar, it's a smaller dwarf cichlid, it's, it's from Central America, doesn't get very big, and it's not aggressive at all. This is Rossio spinosissimus.